How does an air conditioner work? Today, I'm gonna to show you and explain to you how an air conditioner works. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, let's get started. This right here is a package air conditioner behind me made by American Standard. And this has got to be one of my favorite models and styles of air conditioning systems. Over the last 20 years of being out in the field as a technician, I've seen this particular package unit last for up to 30 years. Every time I come upon one of these models, I try my best to keep it repaired instead of having to replace it because I realize that this is great quality. Today, we're gonna take off a few panels and I'm gonna show you how this thing works. To know how an air conditioner works, we first have to familiarize ourselves with the components that comprise an air conditioning system. There's usually an indoor section and an outdoor section to an air conditioning system, whether it's a split or a package like this. Let's take the outdoor section and break that down into components. So this is our outdoor section. Our outdoor section contains our compressor, which helps the refrigerant to flow through the system or makes the refrigerant flow through the system by compressing or pumping the refrigerant. Then we have our outdoor coil, which is our condenser coil, which rejects heat. And then we have our outdoor fan motor, which is our condenser fan motor. This is what draws air through the condenser coil and then out the top. That's our outdoor section. Now let's go over the indoor section. This is our indoor section. It's comprised of three components. We have another coil, which is an evaporator coil, which absorbs heat from the home. Then we have our metering device, which is this piece of copper right here. This is a fixed orifice right here. Usually you have an EEV, which is electronic expansion valve, a TXV, which is thermostatic expansion valve, and a fixed orifice metering device. Most air conditioning systems now have a TXV or an EEV valve. The last component is another fan motor. This one is called the indoor fan motor or the evaporator fan motor. This pulls air through this coil and it pulls that air from inside the home. So the air that's pulling through the unit is pulling through a filter, through the return trunk, and then through this indoor coil. Now that the air conditioner is running in the cooling mode, to better show you what's happening, I'm gonna be using the Thermal Master P2. It's the world's second smallest thermal camera, and I've got it attached to my phone so that you can actually see which coil is hot and which coal, coal is cold. Let's talk about the refrigerant flowing through the system. Let's start from the beginning, from the compressor, and then where does it go from there? So if you take a look at the thermal imaging camera and then you look at the line, this is where our low pressure vapor enters the compressor. And you can see I've got a temperature clamp and it says it's 27 degrees. So that is really, really low temperature, low pressure vapor entering that reciprocating compressor. Then we exit the compressor through the discharge line. And you can see that that line is red, indicating that it's hot. Right now we see that our temperature clamp says it's 77 degrees. The thermal imaging camera says it's about 80 right here. So this is hot gas leaving that compressor. So it enters as a low pressure vapor and it exits as a high pressure, high temperature vapor. Then we enter the condenser coil. This rejects the heat. How does it reject the heat? Well, if we have a hot gas entering the top of that coil and traveling through the coil, as the air outside passes across it, then the temperature of that refrigerant, that temperature, that heat is gonna be rejected to the outside air, especially since we have a fan pulling that air across that coil. In order for the heat transfer to work efficiently, the outside air temperature must be lower than the condenser temperature. So the condenser temperature must be higher than the outside air temperature. Now let's check our condenser split. Now we're checking the outside air temperature, which is 68. And we're checking the discharge air temperature, which is 86. So that's about 17, 18 degrees 
typical condenser split is in between 15 and 30 degrees. Hot gas from our compressor discharge line enters the top of the condenser coil. This is where it's 100% vapor. As it moves through the coil, somewhere in the middle, that vapor condenses. So it's 50% liquid and 50% vapor. As it moves to the bottom of the coil, it's subcooled. This is where it's 100% liquid. Now, if you look at the thermal imaging camera, at the very top, it's, it's warm, right? It's 80 degrees. And then by the time you get to the bottom, it's 50 degrees. So we have hot gas that's entering, and then we have a liquid leaving. So hot gas and then liquid because we're desuperheating, condensing, and subcooling. So again, low pressure vapor enters the compressor, high pressure vapor comes out, that high temperature vapor goes through the condenser coil, the hot air passes through the coil, the heat is rejected, and then that superheated vapor that went into the condenser is desuperheated, condensed, and subcooled. Now what happens next? So we entered right here through this manifold, and then down here, we exit. This is known as our liquid line. And as you can see, the liquid line is about 60 degrees. So we go up, and then we go over, and now we're going to our indoor section. Here's our indoor section, and here is our liquid line. You see that line right here? This is our liquid line. So it's coming in at that, what, 60 degrees? See, 60 degrees? And then this metering device is dropping the pressure because it's restricting that refrigerant. You see how the top was, what, 60? Uh, yeah, 60, and then you go down, and it's what, 58, 55? So we're dropping temperature and we're dropping the pressure. You can think of evaporator as vapor, as makes vapor. Condenser makes liquid. Evaporator makes vapor. So we're going into our coil as a liquid. Take a look at this coil. 35, 38. So we got 80 degree vapor going in over there. And then, you know, we've got what, 50 degree liquid going into here. What happens is the air from inside is usually warmer than the temperature of this coil. And then the temperature of that air, that heat is absorbed from that air. This coil absorbs the heat from the air and that heat allows for that refrigerant to boil off back into a vapor. And then that vapor leaves and it travels through this suction line. In order to have an efficient heat transfer, the temperature of the air in our home that gets pulled through the duct into the evaporator must be a higher temperature than the evaporator. So the evaporator's temperature must be lower than the air temperature in the home. Now let's check our evaporator split. A typical evaporator split is around 20 degrees. Let's check the air entering the evaporator, which is 64. And then let's check the air leaving the evaporator which is 44. So that is exactly 20 degrees. The air entering the evaporator is commonly referred to as the return air temperature. The air leaving the evaporator is commonly referred to as the supply air temperature. Well, where does this suction line go? The suction line goes back in to the compressor. See that suction line right there coming from the indoor section? going back into the compressor, back out to repeat the cycle all over again. So to keep it simple, we are just absorbing heat from the home and we are rejecting it outside. We have to have motors to pull the air through the ductwork, through a coil. We have to have a motor out here to pull the air from outside through the coil. And those motors have to have electricity. So we have a component like a relay or a contactor that closes whenever your thermostat calls for cooling and that sends power to your compressor, your indoor fan motor, your outdoor fan motor. 
And that compressor will just make that refrigerant flow through the coils. While the refrigerant flows through the coils, while the air passes across, everything works in unison and you're just absorbing and rejecting heat. You're taking heat from one place where it is no longer needed and putting it in a place where it is needed. So outside, inside. Hope that makes sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell. Ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you wanna learn how to clean an air conditioner, I just did a video on that. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. If you're a technician or you wanna be a technician, I've got hundreds of videos of real live experience as a technician in the field to help you be a better technician. If you're a homeowner, you wanna learn more about your air conditioner, how it works, how you can save money on your electric bill, what you can do. Maybe you have too much humidity. You wanna learn how to get the humidity down to an acceptable level. Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Homeowners. If you've got a question, remember, questions can lead to new content. So definitely ask your questions down in the comments. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.